immediately after the COVID-19 outbreak, universities all around the globe rapidly implemented distant teaching. And the homes of millions of students suddenly became teaching and learning centers. But were educational systems ready for this rapid transition? My guest this week's responsible innovation story is Professor Margarete Ramersdorfer, Vice Rector for Academic Programs and Students' Affairs at VU Vienna, the Vienna University of Economics and Business, one of the largest business schools in Europe. In her role as Vice Rector, Professor Ramersdorfer was responsible for coordinating and implementing the transition of the entire teaching program to distance mode, affecting over 20,000 students and several hundred faculty members. Professor Ramersdorfer, how did you organize the transition to distance teaching? The idea was not to give up the semester. So I guess this was an important task to communicate from the very beginning. And the second thing then was to have everything already prepared to hand to the lecturers in order to make them or give them the possibility to switch. We decided on, I guess, Thursday to switch to distance learning from Monday on. And um, within the week from Monday on, 1,700 courses are um, held in distance learning format. What were the biggest challenges? So first, I guess the challenge depends on the perspective because you have the lecturer perspective, you have the learner perspective, you have the university perspective and every perspective is completely different. I guess they all have in common that there is a need for action um, or that this need for action comes as a surprise and it was very quick. The hardest challenge, I guess, for VU was that most courses have always been and continue and will be in the future again, face-to-face -face contact or physical interaction at the campus. And I guess this was the hardest thing because we love our campus. It's a beautiful campus. And then to say it's not allowed to use the campus, it's the campus is closed for the students. I guess this was the hardest challenge. What kind of feedback did you receive about distance teaching from students as well as from faculty members by now? I guess the students are grateful to still have the possibility to study and not lose the semester completely. I guess the longer the situation becomes, the harder it is um, because then obviously the criticisms will come in the near future. So the first um, wave, let's put it like this way, um, was quite positive. Also from the faculty side. So the faculty said it was good that there was a lot of communication. So what we tried was to always have a two-fold communication. So every email that was sent out to the lecturers or to the faculty was also sent out to the students and vice versa. The second thing that was then challenging, which may bring me back to your former question is then over than the exams. What are the main challenges about online exams? As we are such a large university, our main challenge is to check the system first whether it is available to cope with the number of students. So just to give you a number, this week we have 12,000 students or 12,000 um, exams that will be taken within the four, week, four days this week. And then we have some other traffic, obviously, on the platform. That means courses that are there, other irregular, smaller exams, take-home exams, uploads, and so on. And then, obviously, we all have the legal restrictions. So the legal restrictions we have to figure out which um, platform can be used. Do we need additional software? How do we treat um, the situation that some students may not have the hardware? Uh, which hardware is important? How do we res how we manage to give everyone the information? Which hardware, software, whatever they have to have in order to do what they maybe want to do? How does VU Vienna tackle issues of cheating and identity in this context? We have um, the scrambling of the exam, so um, not everyone taking the exam at the same time receives the same question. Um, then we have um, 
the possibility to have online examinations. So we um, decided not to use proctoring software or proctoring firms to assist us in the online exams. We have something that is called online examination. And here our faculty is able to observe what the students do. Several um, lecturers prefer to trust the students and to give them, let's say, harder exams, open book exams, etc. Obviously, the highest or the trickiest thing is um, to figure out um, is the person in front of the computer really the student that we want to um, assess here. I guess it becomes trickier for the tune or for other exams a bit later this year because when the people have the possibility to move around again and sit close to each other, then I guess it maybe it's even trickier than now. What measures are taken to ensure data privacy and security? So every tool we have um, or every tool that we offer and recommend to the student and teachers has been thoroughly examined with regard to the data privacy and security regulations and um, options where the views respective IT and legal consultants were not fully sure were discarded immediately. The platform we use is our homegrown platform. It's, it's called Learn and it's not comparable to the platforms out there. So it's not just um, just a learning environment where you provide um, information. It's more so you can have their exams online. So this was already implemented. So we did not have to build this immediately. It was already there, but it was not used for official exams. It was just for uh, test cases and for homeworks. What happens if students or faculty members experience technical issues during during an exam? So we try to um, give every student the possibility to test it upfront. So this was our first um, takeaway. What we learned then was that the support is really important because there are so many questions concerning technical things, but also learn specific things. So dealing with the platform, um, so questions how they can back go back or forth and so on. So we had to have an IT expert, we have to have a learn expert, and normally we also have to have someone from the uh, digital, digital teaching services available during all the exams we have in the last few days. What aspects of teaching can be easily replaced from a distance and what aspects need face-to-face -face interactions? I thought in the very beginning there may be a huge difference across the different um, topics. But I'm sure it's not. So I guess everything can be prepared online as well. I guess there is a lot of things that are better in face-to-face -face contact or even if you have the possibility to discuss. So a discussion is completely different if it's within a classroom or if it's online. So you see the mimics, you see a lot of different things that um, make you react completely different. And I guess this is the, um, the social learning that is completely missing. Do you think that online teaching methods lose a little bit of this interaction or is there also an additional value in online teaching? What I feel, and this is just my personal impression, is that um, a lot of young people have not learned how to learn. So online learning makes them aware that there is the content, that there is the information, they have to consume it by themselves. Will this change the role of university teachers from delivering content to coaching on how to learn on your own? I guess it has to be both. So it really depends also on the stage of the university. So if you think undergraduate levels, obviously the content that is delivered there is sometimes just like reading the book. If it's then about um, arguing, um, figuring out the logic behind or thinking beyond the concepts, obviously then the discussion and the guidance, the coaching from, from the professor is important. How do you think will the post-crisis university look like? I guess in the long run, we have to come to a mixture of these formats. I guess this is something that was already there in the pipe of a lot of universities, but no one tried to follow, especially these um, things. So it will be some kind of hybrid form. I guess 
on the one hand, the students have to learn on their own, as I mentioned before, and then they have to be able to discuss and pronounce their understandings or not understandings of the topics and the methods. Um, I guess what, um, what we have to do is we have to learn from each other. And I guess this is a very important thing because this means also that not just the students learn from the students, but also the lecturers learn from the students. Could this experience of COVID-19 caused online teaching and online learning also have effects on our resource allocation by making large courses more efficient online and at the same time allowing for more individualized teaching formats where they are needed? I would prefer to increase the quality time with the students, um, even also for larger courses. So I guess making larger courses more efficient does not mean that the individualizing teaching formats have to be reserved for other students or courses. So it has to be reshifted within the same course. But this could also mean that the assistance needed to especially survive the early stage at a study or at a university is given to those who need it. With so many teaching and learning resources now being recorded, will this crisis also be a push for an open university? And do you expect even more competition between the leading universities because of distance learning? What seems pretty certain is that distance learning will become um, much more important um, as a competitive factor. So if you have the possibility to switch into distance learning and reverse, I guess will be important in the future in order to give the students the possibility to finish their studies. So universities that have not done well in this crisis, I guess, will find it harder to win students in the future. What kind of technologies will we need for making higher education even more smarter in the future? So what I expect is that there will be some need for collaborative teaching and learning. So this means we need also collaborative tools that um, help us that the online learning environment is not just a provider of information, that it allows the collaborations. What we definitely see now from this distance learning mode, for example, as we decided for Teams, Teams um, allows you to be interactive, to have the collaboration, but this implies every message from everyone that is with you in one of those classes receives you or is is a pop-up window on the phone, on the computer. So this is really overwhelming. So this is a lot of collaboration. Maybe this is too much. <laughs> so I don't know whether it's really a tightrope walk, but I guess it needs some collaborative tools. Thank you very much for this very interesting interview. Thank you.